What's up guys? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we are coming to you today from a place here in Florida that we have not been to yet. Um, we've been to a lot of places in Florida, but not this one. This week we are down in Everglades National Park at Long Pine Key Campground. Um, beautiful place back here. No hookups, so uh, it is it is boondocking, but it is very peaceful back here right now. Super quiet. Not a lot of times a year that uh, you can boondock in Florida and Enjoy not it enjoyably. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, normally you'll be probably sweating your tail off and uh, doing everything you can to try to stay cool but we got super lucky um it's been warm even for january but luckily for us cold front just come through i think the warmest day we're going to have is going to be like in the mid 70s uh, maybe creeping to the upper 70s for a high but at night we're looking at upper 40s to low to mid 50s uh, just beautiful beautiful weather uh, beautiful bright blue sky now that front's passed and uh, we're really looking forward to exploring this area and showing you guys what the Florida Everglades has to offer. And as far as this campground, when we got here yesterday, it was a little bit um, not clear as far as how it's set up with the loops. So we'll show you what we mean by that. Um, when you, after you check in there at the little guard shack, um, as you pull through, it, it seems like the campground maybe used to be set up to where you came in from one direction but now they have you coming in from the opposite direction. So basically, you go past the guard shack and then you find the loop that you're supposed to be on. You turn down the loop and all the, all the uh, campsites, the, the pads are kind of facing the wrong direction um, to back into them. So we'll show you what we're talking about. Um, what in a huge deal. So you can't reserve a specific site. You have to reserve by the length of your rig or how big of a site you want. We reserved the largest sites they have which is 38 I think it was 38 to 43 or 38 to 45 so we reserved one of those um, at check-in they just assign you a site and she told us that if we see a different site that we liked as long as there wasn't someone there just come up and let her know and they would switch us to that site um, we got to the first site we were supposed to be at and there was no way that our rig was going to fit in that site um, if we weren't sticking out in the road it would have been really really close uh, it was a very, very small site. Had some bushes at the back of it, some uh, trees and things there at the, at the very back of the site that backed up right to the pad. So we wouldn't have been able to hang over the back of the pad. Um, and it was supposed to be a 38 foot site minimum. Um, and we're 34. So we noticed that about a lot of the sites that said they were for 38 to the 43 or 45. I can't remember which one, but a lot of them look short for what they say. Um, but we found one on the same loop and this one was seemed a little bit longer and we got in here okay so it worked out okay and it's it's really you know we've got plenty of room in between us and our neighbors where you've got like the vegetation and the bushes so you've got a lot of privacy yeah it worked out really well um, we went just down from the site we were that she she assigned to us uh, we're actually in site eight so it is uh, I mean you can see here behind us we've got plenty of room back here behind us uh, we've got a little generator set up way back over here so there there's another site on the opposite side of these trees but it's pretty it's pretty far over there and then the bathhouse is behind that so uh, having our generator set up back here in the back you know you walk out by the street and you can't even hear it running uh, they only allow you to run your generator from 8 a.m to 8 p.m which in weather like this don't need any ac uh, all we're really using the generator for is just to run a few things, charge some stuff up, top off some batteries maybe. Um, so it yeah. should work out really nice. So we're headed over to check out the Anhinga Trail today and stop by the visitor center and uh, we'll show you what we find. Yeah, we have a few things in mind that we're going to try to do while we're here. Uh, some of the things are outside, outside of the park. So we'll show you what all that's about and uh, getting ready to head down and do our hike now. See anything? Oh. 
15. <laughs> Alright, so right here on the Anhinga Trail, and uh, we're on the boardwalk section of it now. Paved all the way up until you get to the boardwalk, then the boardwalk makes a loop um, over the grass and marshy area. And a uh, beautiful, beautiful little hike out here. Definitely, definitely have a chance to see some alligators for sure. Um, the water is crystal clear. We've seen so many largemouth bass, bluegills, see a bunch of fish swimming around out there. Uh, the water is, it, it's some of the cleanest, clearest water I've ever seen. It's beautiful out here. So we're going to continue down this trail and uh, hopefully we see an alligator. I almost see him under the water, Dylan. See him swimming around under the water? Maybe I'll get some better. That's crazy yeah. how big that fish yeah. is. Yeah, that's how clear that water is. You can see him swimming under the water with this fish. Got him. <laughs> that's probably three, four feet deep right there. You can see him all the way under the water. There he is. <laughs> Yep. That's so cool. What kind of fish is that? That it's is a, a cichlid. Yeah. Right? But you would think of it, right? Yeah. It looks like it's a fish. As we come around, we got an alligator right here on the side. And then we got one sitting nice and warm up on the path. No one just off the path on the left, huh? I see it. Whoa. Yeah. I think they're too. Mm -hmm. I think it's We're headed back into the campground now. I'll show you guys what we were talking about a little bit earlier as far as the way you have to access the campsites. So as you come into the campground itself, the loops are marked with the site numbers. So we got loop A, site one through three. Loop B, which is the one we're on, is sites four through eight. So this is the way you're going to come into the campground. So we go down loop B. So the site we were originally supposed to be in is right here on the right, uh, site 7. Very, very short site. Uh, very short. It's supposed to be at least 38 feet long. I haven't put out a tape measure, but I don't think it's 38 feet. Uh, if we put our fifth wheel on there, we would definitely be hanging in the road, I think. Um, it, it's really really short but the other issue as you can see it backs in on the wrong angle if you're coming in from this way so on the left up here is the site we actually ended up with site 8 you can see how the angle that we're backed in on there so once you find your site you may have to go past it and then uh, make make a big loop around down another down another loop uh, that way you can come back and be facing the right direction to pull in so here's the site site number eight the sites here are actually really really big um, the pad length is not so big I mean you can see we're right out pretty much to the end of our pad and almost as far back as we can go to the bushes back there and this site is supposed to be 38 to 45 feet. So, given the fact that we're hanging over the back of our site a couple of feet, and we're almost at the very front edge of it, I don't think it's 38 feet. They let you park your park your vehicle on the shoulder, so you don't have to have your vehicle on the on the paved pad. You can park it in the grass if you need to. But you can see, I mean, it's a very very private site. Uh, lots of 
vegetation there in between the sites. So definitely can't complain about the site. It's been a really, really good one for us. We can set the generator back here out of the way. Got a little path that cuts through uh, over to the bathhouse. Bathhouse is right, right through this path, which is also where the uh, water spigot is located to refill your water. So today we decided to take a drive over to Biscayne National Park. Uh, it's only about 40, 45 minutes from Everglades National Park where we're staying. Um, not going to be able to see all the park because 95% of this park is underwater or in the water. But they do have a couple of trails over here and we can get into the visitor center, check it out, get Dylan his uh, Biscayne National Park stamp for his passport book. Yep. So we're going to head on in here and uh, check this place out. So we just come out of the visitor center and now we're back here on the jetty trail. Uh, beautiful day for it. High today is gonna be like in the mid 70s. So can't complain about that. And then got this beautiful view of Biscayne Bay back here behind us. Just uh, a beautiful, beautiful day down here in South Florida. Oh, look that at that whole is, school. That is, that oh, is a bear. I didn't even see all those. That's a little barracuda. Barracuda. Yeah, you know, okay. <laughs> you know, a little see barracuda there, up there. As you continue down the jetty trail just a short way, comes to this nice boardwalk. So another nice feature, or another nice thing about this uh, section is it's pet friendly. So brought Nix out with us this morning, get her out to stretch her legs, don't have to leave her behind. Off the boardwalk and then you have a little mangrove trail to go down to get to the end of the jetty. So it looks like once you hit the boardwalk, you're allowed to fish. Uh, they have fishing line recycling bins to put your old fishing line in. We've seen a couple guys out here fishing. So you are, you are allowed to fish out here once you uh, get to the boardwalk and then out here onto the little jetty. Probably have a good chance of catching a bunch of little snapper, mangrove snapper. have a lot of signs out here with the regulations and the uh, size limits in order to be able to keep them. But a very, very nice walk out here. Uh, I don't think I want to take this walk in the summertime. It would probably be brutal out here in the middle of summer, but it ain't the middle of summer and uh, the weather's beautiful. So real glad we took a ride over here uh, and, and checked this place out this morning. All right, so there we go. We made it to the end of the jetty. Uh, we got a beautiful view of Biscayne Bay once you get to the end out here. So now we're going to head back. And speaking of fishing, we're going to go try to catch some fish that are uh, pretty exclusive to South Florida freshwater. We'll show you what that's all about here in just a few minutes. So we've left Biscayne, uh, Biscayne National Park. And the fish we're looking to find are peacock bass. So we've been down in this area. Uh, we used to come down here years ago when we lived uh, up in Stewart, Port St. Lucie area. We would come down here and uh, find peacock bass in the canals and catch them. Very, very fun fish to catch. But as I'm walking here, checking these canals, looking for some fish, we are way up, way up in the homestead. Uh, we're actually about a quarter mile from Homestead Miami Speedway and in the canal we've got two manatees all the way up in here. A big one and a smaller one with it. Even though this is kind of a in the canal kind of in town the water is crystal clear. And on the way back to the truck so just to give you an idea of how diverse things can be down here in South Florida, 
we have our manatees here in the water all right and then on the other shore got mr alligator over there hanging out in the bushes so crazy crazy place down here in south florida uh, and you really never, never know what you might see down here when you get around the water. So we went to try to find the peacock bass. That turned out to be kind of a bust. Um, it's really a little, a little early in the year. Uh, usually springtime when things are starting to warm up a little bit, when the water temperature is starting to warm up. They really like that, that warmer water. It makes them a lot more active and a lot easier to catch. Once we got back to the campground, we decided to go for a walk just to kind of see what the back side of the campground looked like uh, down toward where the tent camping area is. So we grabbed Nick's, we go for a walk, we walked about a mile, and uh, as we were coming back around the front of the camper, back into our site, there was a about a four to five foot rattlesnake rolling through our site. Um, crazy. Uh, you know, I grew up in Florida, lived here my whole life, and the one thing I've never ever seen out in the wild, and we've I've been to, you know, spent a tremendous amount of time outdoors. One thing I've never seen is an eastern diamondback rattlesnake uh, out in the wild like that. So we got to see one this time. Uh, Not only just in the wild, but at our campsite, slithering across our rug. Yeah, I mean, it was just going to be a leisurely walk to take Nick's and let her stretch her legs and let us check the campground out. We did not bring our camera with us, so. I, uh, I snatched out my phone real quick and I got some uh, some cell phone video of it. So here's what that looked like having a rattlesnake roll through your uh, campsite. You know you go for a walk and you come back and you have a little visitor rolling through the campsite. So I'm just going to give him a bit of space and let him just ease on through. It was really quite impressive um, watching it because it wasn't in defense mode. It wasn't rattling. It was just going about its business. It wasn't too much worried about anything. It was just going back to the bushes. We just happened to catch it at the right time. Yeah, he was very casual about uh, about rolling through the site there. Um, you know, he was just kind of going from from this area back over here. He kind of came across, and then he was headed back uh, over here to these palmettos and everything behind us. So uh, we haven't seen him since. He just just rolled through and and kind of eased off into the palmettos at his own pace. Um, and I wouldn't think that you're going to be overridden with them here. I think it's pretty <clears throat> uncommon for you to actually see the rattlesnakes or one of the other three venomous snakes here. It says that they have over 20 snakes that call the Everglades home, and only four of them are venomous. And it's much more likely to see one that's not venomous. Yeah, I mean. And especially given the time of year that this place is open, when that weather drops, the snakes get very, very lethargic, a lot more inactive, aren't going to be moving around a whole lot. So, uh, haven't seen them since, but it was a super cool experience. Uh, made us very, very aware uh, when we're walking around out here. And we have our dog out, just made us very aware and made sure we paid attention, watched our step, looked around before we just went, uh, you know busting out the door and uh with, with the dog to take her out so um you know what are you gonna do you're in the everglades this is where they live you know we're uh we're kind of intruding on their space so uh it didn't freak us out we actually thought it was kind of neat but it did make us be a little extra cautious uh, for the rest of our stay yeah had the situation been a little bit differently and we stepped out and was about to step on it then it would have freaked us out for sure Speaking of the time of year that they're open here, a lot of campgrounds up north close in the winter. The Long Pine Key Campground is open from November through April. So they close for the summer because of the mosquitoes and how wet it gets out here. That gives you an idea of kind of the environment in this area uh, when they close the campground during the summertime. And that's their two reasons they list is because one is mosquitoes, which I'm sure would be incredibly incredibly unbearable out here in the summertime uh, we had to, we dealt with a few while we've been here you know this time of year but mosquitoes and 
the uh, the fact that summertime is rainy season in Florida. As you drive into to the park, uh, you know there's there's like marshy areas on both sides of the road, and uh, the water is almost up to the road right now. So during the rainy season, I'm sure that road gets covered up, and it probably gets pretty probably gets pretty messy back here. One more thing to note: if you're going to come down to either uh, the Long Pine Key Campground or Flamingo, which is about 40 miles south, if you continue past this campground and head 40 miles further, you'll get to Flamingo Campground. Uh, Long Pine has Verizon cell signal, and it's actually a very, very good signal out here. Um, we've been able to work. We've been able to uh, stream, you know, stream some videos for Dylan to watch uh, while we had the generator running, and the signal's fantastic for Verizon. No AT&T. You go down to Flamingo, you have AT&T only, no Verizon. So, uh, something to be aware of. Yeah, and they, they put a note of that on their website when booking. So, at least they did that, but that's kind of unique uh, to campgrounds. They let you know that. So, uh, that's about it. I mean, that's going to wrap up our stay here in Everglades National Park. It's been a lot neater of a place than we were kind of expecting it to be. Um, you know, being able to go out on the Anhinga Trail, seeing the alligators out there, and um, seeing how clear that water was, and seeing the fish, and then being relatively close to the Keys. Um, we actually went down and visited the Keys, so we'll have a video coming out pretty soon on our, our little day trip down to the Keys, so keep an eye out for that. But uh, it's, been, it's been a really good spot. The weather definitely, definitely helped. We only had two days when it got into like the upper, like mid to upper 70s, and only one night when it actually got really muggy and sticky, so didn't sleep too good that night. Uh, so one out of five isn't but bad. One out of five nights, as far, as far south as we are, we'll take that. All right, we appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you guys down the road.